From COVID to climate change, we must act now. There is no more talk. There is only do. According to NASA, climate change is a change in the usual weather found in a place. Uh, this change could be in how much rain a place usually gets a year, or it could be a change in a place's usual temperature for a month or a season. Climate change is also the change in Earth's climate. This could be a change in Earth's usual temperature. Take Colorado, for example. The days before and after Labor Day 2020 are officially on the record books, sadly. Southern Colorado experienced a swing of 60 to 70 degrees from record heat over Labor Day weekend to fresh snow within 48 hours. That's insane, okay? So just because it's not in your backyard, your global footprint affects everyone. You are being affected whether you choose to or not. Uh, from the kind of water we buy to the food we consume and the way we consume it, you know, <laughs> The, the cars we drive and, and the behaviors we, we teach our children, everything matters, even voting. But without a planet, votes don't matter. Mother Earth must be priority. We must act now. We, we, we should have acted yesterday. And climate change is not coming. Climate change is here. So let's just... Take a breath for a moment and let that marinate for a second. Today on the show, I'd like to welcome climate actor and my friend, Colby Menifee. You know her from the hit TV series, uh, Fear the Walking Dead, big fan, and the new series, The Boys on Amazon Prime, now in its second season. So what's a climate actor? I'll let her tell you. I'm your host, Lauren Aparicio. This is another episode of Quarantine But Cute, Please welcome Colby Menifee, live from New York City. Hi. Oh, girl. <laughs> you look so beautiful, by the way. Well, it's a filter, let's be real. <laughs> but thank you, but thank you. I'll take the filter off for everybody. Uh, no. You look, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you should look. I, should, I just, should I just keep it? You're so au natural and gorgeous and glowing right now. I've been spending a lot of time in the sun. Um, first of all, also great, great introduction, facts, things that you said, like, yeah, agree 100% with all the stuff. Yeah, I, I just, I think I finally hit a point, like, well, First of all, I was the girl in third grade that was making the save the whales buttons, right? But I wasn't saving the whales. And we did a lot of talk about it, but we didn't really do much about it. You know, it's sort of like the way things trend on, on uh, Instagram and social media, and then they go away, right? Well, so it's hard. climate change is one of those things where like, it's a really long, I mean, we're seeing the effects of it right now. And we've been seeing the effects, you know, for a couple of years, um, 35 couple years. Yeah. <laughs> a couple decades now. And, uh, it's really hard for people to like wrap their head around it. Also, as soon as you start to think about the fact that our lives when we're in our sixties or our children's lives or our grandchildren's lives are going to be pretty unrecognizable to how we grew up. Right. It Really hard to accept that and so it's much easier to live in denial and to just think yeah yeah it's something that's coming maybe down the line and you know it's easier to just kind of put in a drawer and compartmentalize so it's a hard thing to to grapple with for sure for sure totally and we're going to go down a lot of avenues i think today in this conversation and i yeah. really appreciate your time let's first talk about what what a climate actor is and we can talk about the shows and those are important i'm so proud of you i just want to say that thank we, you we were fortunate enough to work on paterno together and you were always such a bright light so let, let's talk about what being a climate actor means because that's a very new term for a lot of people and yeah. sometimes that can be scary and you know being an activist gets a lot of flack a lot. So let's just debunk what all this is right now. Yeah. Tell me what it is. So um, uh, 
a couple years ago, I did a reading with this guy um, named Tim Guinea, who's an actor and um, a climate reality leader. And that is an, a program that uh, Vice President Al Gore has put together. It's an organization. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I still raise the roof, honey. Huh? Yeah, I, said, I still raise the roof. I'm from ATL, but go ahead. Um, it's an organization that uh, Al Gore has put together to um, get as many people from around the world to give his famous uh, PowerPoint presentation about climate change. Um, and so Tim Guinea uh, saw that I was really interested in climate activism. And he was like, try to do this thing. And I, you know, it's an in-person training session. And I tried to get to it for like two years. But um, unfortunately for that, and luckily for me, I was just kind of consistently working and wasn't able to get there. It's, it's, uh, they, ha they house them all over the place. Um, a lot of the time, the ones I was trying to get to were like in South Carolina. Anyway, uh, and finally, because coronavirus hit and I was in quarantine, they held these virtual ones and I was able to finally get to that training. Um, and then Tim Guinea also started this thing called the Climate Actors, which is just collecting as many um, uh, actors as he could to say, these people who live in the world and uh, behave in the world, and uh, they believe that climate change is real. So it's just, it's just trying to, to, to normalize right. climatism in a way that's like, this is just something we should be doing on our everyday in our everyday lives. Um, but in terms of like climate activism, um, what the Climate Reality Project does is it empowers you with all of this knowledge, with, with the presentation slides uh, in order to uh, make presentations in your community, in um, communities around the world, wherever you go. Where, I mean, I work in Toronto a lot of the time, I work in Austin a lot of the time to like go to those places, uh, connect with people in the community and say, I'd like to give a presentation um, about climate change. And it's filled with a lot of really, really scary information, but it's also yeah. filled with a lot of hope. Um, and it's also, you know, uh, we're, I, I started trying to live waste free-ish a couple years ago. And like, it's a constant challenge and like arming people with the options of like, you know, next time you buy toilet paper, you don't have to buy this really expensive, fluffy toilet paper. You can buy toilet paper that is recycled, this from made from recycled paper that comes in a box and doesn't come with any plastic in it, you know, providing totally. other options. So I had this epiphany a few months ago and, you know, Water, right, is a massive scam in our country. Now, mm -hmm. I am just going to put it out there. I started working with Congan, and I sell the machines, uh, the alkalized water. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, um, I'm not familiar with that, but I know that you sent me one of those things. So it's all about sustainability. It lasts for 25 years. You hook wow. it up to your tap, and you're not taking water away from indigenous people by buying spring water. And oh, okay. it has like 58 uses. Anyway, the point is I came to this realization that, I just wanted to be healthier than I've ever been before. Do you know what I mean? And health is wealth, right? In our country. So the way we buy food, the water that we consume, driving cars, how we treat others, all of that is interconnected. And so many people, because it's not in their backyard, like I mentioned before, they are either overwhelmed about wanting to figure out how to change their life, or feel like it's too expensive to go organic or buy something like a Kangen or, you know, uh, move to a place that may have, you know, better air quality because maybe that, that place is more expensive to live or something. People get super overwhelmed by the steps we have to take in order to act now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the micro steps you have taken and the things that people could start in their everyday lives, even if it's just one thing. Yeah. I mean, I will say like, there are certain, there are certain things that, um, that require the luxury to have the time, the money, uh, 
and the wherewithal to like put a lot of these things into action. You know, I mean, there, there, there is, there is definitely a, um, a luxury involved with taking a lot of these steps, but there's also a myth about a lot of, a lot of that luxury. Like a lot of people say going vegan is really expensive when actually you're not buying a lot of meat. So true. Eat rice and beans and greens and those will provide a, a whole protein. And it's, most of the time a hell of a lot cheaper if you want to get into like vegan substitutes like fancy vegan butter and fancy vegan cheese right. then it get expensive but um but so there are actionable steps that you can take that are really inexpensive like for example if you take a reusable water bottle and you just fill up your water bottle everywhere yes <laughs> and you take um a glass jar with you to when you want to go get a coffee and you take a glass jar with you and you have uh the coffee shop refill that glass jar yes. those things that are like that you know you end up not buying plastic water bottles because you have that if you purchase one reusable bottle you don't buy all those plastic water bottles and you don't have to worry about it people some people don't like the taste of their um of their uh tap water um, some people, for example, in Flint, Michigan, don't have the luxury of having clean tap water. Uh, still, people are suffering from some of that. So that's that's a, that's what I what I'm talking about. Where the luxury starts to happen, if you have the luxury of having clean tap water, why buy bottled water? There's really no there's really no point. Um, there's no point in buying bottled water. And you know, before I got a Kangen, we had reverse osmosis, right? So that takes out the chlorine. Yeah great, but it's still super acidic. And I've done a bunch of tests on my own page about it. You guys can go to at Devour Kangen to learn more. Um, but it, it's those small steps. So I bought the Kangen, decided to become a distributor. And now I don't have to buy a water bottle forever. Yeah. yeah. It through my tap, dude. Exactly. And it's like, I'll, I'll get you connected with some, but um, it's direct sales. But as far as like, what you did when it comes to um, zero waste. Like that scares people. That scares people to go, oh my God, okay, I really want to help the environment, but you know. Yeah. I, mean? I remember I had a friend who was like, I really, really want to be more, and this is not just that person, this is a lot of people. They're like, I really want to be more waste free. What are some things that I can do? And I say, the biggest things you can do is bring a reusable water bottle, I, like I said, bring a jar and bring yeah. a bag with you and some utensils and they're like yeah I usually don't carry a bag around with me and I'm like well there are certain things that you that you can do and I'll go into some of them that are the tiniest bit inconvenient but once you get used to them it just becomes part of your life and it's not even an inconvenience totally. like oh um some things um so always bring a bag with you to the supermarket um always. I go shop in bulk it's actually much cheaper uh, and instead of getting pla those plastic bags that are on the roll in the supermarket, you just buy these little um, cloth bags. Yes. That have, they have tears on the side. So you can, you can, you bring them up to the cash register and they will take away what the weight of the cloth bag is in order to, yeah, it's like, it's incredible. And then um, uh, let's think. Toilet paper. There's this great company called Who Gives a Crap. Um, that you <laughs> I know them. Yeah, they're great. You just order like a shit ton of toilet paper. It comes in a box. There's no plastic involved. Fifty percent of all their proceeds go to building toilets in communities that need them. And every one of their rolls is made out of recycled paper, not recycled toilet paper, which is an important distinction, <laughs> but recycled paper. God, I hope not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, have you seen, have you seen, this is what I've been using for a few years and got them, they're great Christmas presents. Yeah. Have you seen the wax, um, different colored things to cover your food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, the beeswax stuff. This stuff is amazing. It's so amazing. Fran wrap, which is just microplastic waiting to happen and, and just imagine what saran wrap can do to something in the to an, to a, an animal in the ocean it's like it really it oh, yeah it starts to yeah speaking of animals in the ocean and um all that uh straws like plastic straws plastic stirs you could just get just um just use a metal straw you buy it totally it around with you and you ultimately now I I must say like in COVID times a lot of 
a lot of places aren't accepting reusable jars to refill. Uh, so that's something you have to kind of contend with. But once COVID starts to be phased out, hopefully. Yeah. I well, mean, part of the problem is like plastic masks, like like the yeah. weight from from uh, single use items in COVID is really, is really, really bad. But. Totally. And I think also to work cooking more, and as you know, I'm a chef, so I use the pH water with the Kangen to clean my veggies and the pesticides versus tap water just comes out. Yeah. It, yeah. It's insane how many pesticides and like, even like before the Kangen, I was using veggie spray wash. Yeah. yeah. That's, still, that's still me buying yeah. plastic. Yeah, yeah, natural chemicals, and yeah. you can totally eliminate that with something like Kangen. But totally. someone's asking respectfully, do you think your efforts are futile? Is it too late for us on Earth? That's a very good. That's a very good question. There is um, clearly a huge amount of stuff that needs to happen systemically. Um, the good news is that green. Uh, energy is just skyrocketing in terms of um, use, especially in the developing world. So there's this great um, uh, proof that that uh, landlines in the developing world weren't used very much, but as soon as cell phones uh, came out, it they were like huge in the developing world and like kind of slowly um, uh, increased gradually in the in like the western developed countries yeah. um, and the same thing is happening with solar and wind so there's just like a huge amount there's this there's this thing here that i have i have a fact hang on um uh the projections um with solar hang on the green energy projections were like in 2000 the projections um the worldwide wind capacity will reach 30 gigawatts by 2010 and by 2019 that was exceeded by a factor of 22 times so like we are we are using solar and wind at a much faster rate and the technology is getting better and it's actually getting much cheaper as time goes on and so that's i want to cut you off really quickly yeah. that's exactly the issue it all comes down to money and people exactly. not be, so our america right Mm -hmm. is founded on an economy, a democracy, let's make money, right? Yeah. So people have been taught that they can't afford it unless they earn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the, you, if you have Con Edison, right? Con Ed has programs within it that you can, you can choose where your energy comes from. Yep. I use Green Mountain Energy Green Mountain. through right. Con Edison, by the way, in New York City. Right. It, Green, Mountain, Green Mountain Energy is an incredible company. You just say, I want my... Yep. my solar and wind but that question uh, going back to that question it's what if we eliminate the demand for uh fossil fuels for if if we vote with our dollar these companies will start to get the message now our our own personal things can only go so far, but I mean, this is why we have to vote Trump out of the um, White House in November. Uh, it's not only Trump, it's the Senate and, and Congress. The more yeah. we have in, in office, the I mean, also let's just remember the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, we are not officially removed from the Paris Climate Ag Agreement uh, coincidentally until the day after, no, two days after the November elections until November 5th. So we have until then to really officially make our, um, make our decision and, uh, all the more reason to get on vote. Number one. And number two, what I'll just say about uh, voting with our dollar, if you start to look at your bank, um, you can see Chase, uh, between 2016, 2019, Chase, uh, invested $268 billion in the industry and in companies that make profits from wow. the change. So I, I read that about Chase and was like, oh yeah, fuck Chase and got all my money out of Chase. Me too. Yeah. I, and you know why I did that? Because of you. I had paid. Oh. This is why every person counts, you guys. Everything that you do yeah. is so important. This show is based on connecting with people and really trying to make a difference not because I want you to follow me, but because I want you to have a better life and I want you to feel like you matter. And Colby is 
a huge advocate for that. And you posted something about Chase and I had paid my card off. So I closed the account. Fuck yeah. And you know, it's interesting. They really don't like that. Like I, I, <laughs> they, when I found out they were funding the Dakota Access Pipeline and I was like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm done with them. Uh, and they really pay attention to divesting. They don't like when their money, because every time you deposit a check into Chase, they take that money and they can invest it wherever they want. With something like a credit union, all the money that goes into the credit union is shared between the people that put their money in the credit union. There's also a bank uh, in New York called Amalgamated Bank that invests only in green energy. And when you look up banks that invest in green energy, that is the only bank that comes up. What? It's Wait. Okay, so is that where your money is, or should we not talk about that? We'll not talk about that, but it's the only, like, unions are amazing, Amalgamated Bank is amazing, but uh, it's, it's really sad. It's like these huge banks invest their money in, in things that make them more money, and when, when, we, when, the, when the consumer says, I don't approve of that, they have to pay attention to that. Now, if all the banks in the world were just to stop investing in fossil fuels, there'd be a huge economic crash. It's, that's impossible to actually uh, uh, make that happen immediately. You know, they have to slowly change what their investments are. They have to slowly remove money from fossil right. fuels and invest in green energy. It's got to be a slow, gradual change. But we don't see that happening quickly enough. And when I left Chase, I said to them, I'm leaving because you invest in the Dakota Access Pipeline. And they were like, okay, yeah, great. And then I ended up, I, I opened a business and needed a credit card. And I was like, well, the Chase credit card is kind of like the best one. And I applied for the Chase credit card. And thank God they, they would not approve me. And it was actually good because fuck them. But like, they would <laughs> And they, they wouldn't give me an answer as to why they didn't approve me. And I'm convinced it's because I'm in their system as not like, yeah, as like not, they're like, we don't like this girl. She's not, you know, but who knows? So, so like anything like Black Lives Matter, um, climate change, politics. I mean, it's, what do they say? It, it's a marathon, not a race. Yeah. But the thing is with climate change, it is a race right now. It's, it's an emergency. It's an emer And in the same way that Black Lives Matter is an emergency. And the, the thing that's, the thing that's uh, interesting is that these things are incredibly intertwined between COVID, Black Lives Matter, climate change. And look at what's happening right now. COVID, Black Lives Matter, fires in the West, hurricane. We have enough, we have enough hurricane um, systems in the Atlantic right now that we are running out of... Uh, uh, names in the alphabet. It usually starts, you know, in the beginning of the year and now we're up to Sally and we're, we have enough systems in the Atlantic right now that we have to start going into the Greek alphabet. Um, and that's okay. the earliest that we've ever had that problem in the year, right? And, and we have also, also not only like, has it just gone balls to the wall this year on so many different levels, I want to talk about two things. One, not only was 2016 the warmest year on record, but eight of the 12 months that make up that year from January to September, with the exception of June, were the warmest on record for those respective five months. Yeah, it's really the past, the, the, la the five hottest years on record were in the past five, the, the la like all these hottest years are just right after including this year it's really it's i mean look at la it was like 120 degrees in la recently it's just but we can sit here and, and it's so important for you to be on and again we are just talking and we yeah. hope that we influence someone to take a bag and not forget it because let's be real we've all contributed to climate change even oh. as children we've all not recycled properly we've well, all um been like oh i'm too lazy to get that bag out of my thing you know yeah. sometimes when i'm in a great mood i'm like oh hold on let that person go before me let me go run to my trunk i mean at least that's what i did in la when i would walk into places and 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 buy food because i felt so bad and like the thing is is i don't want people to feel guilty because they're not doing something so how do we change 
the way we talk and think about it. So people will actually do something. The compassion and the empathy have to be there without forcing and telling people what to do. But at the same time, it's like the mask thing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's a good uh, thing to be aware of. It's, it's, it has to be a cultural, it's a cultural shift. Um, I think, uh, I mean, just being born, we consume carbon. We, we, I mean, we emit carbon, sorry, not consume. <laughs> we emit carbon into, we have a carbon footprint just by being born. There's no two ways about it. Um, and the, you know, as, I mean, you think about it in World War II, right? We would turn off our lights as a sim, at night, as a symbolic, uh, like standing in, conjunction with uh europe like we like they were dealing with bombs being dropped on them at night and we didn't have any risk of that but in solidarity we turned off our our lights at night we had victory gardens and we fed the entire country on these victory gardens we made sacrifices because we were willing to make sacrifices for our country um lately as we know living in this culture there's a shift to America first, my family first, my race first, me first. And we, the thing about climate change is that we are all gonna suffer from it, but the people who are suffering from it first, the people who are on the front lines of suffering from it are people of color. And, uh, Facts. For, and you know, if you're black, you're 1.5 times more, uh, uh, what's that word? Uh, more, uh, more, I know what you're saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Have, you'll have more, um, air pollution that you're, um, faced with in your life just because you, because if you're black, you're 75% more likely to be living on frontline communities, which are, um, communities that are, that are bordering, uh, pollution plants and, uh, gas, oil refinery place. I mean, you're just right along the edge. You're downstream of the uh, toxic chemicals. You're downwind of the smokestack. So I see questions. So, yeah. So, I mean, everything you're saying is, are they're facts and people the like, right? So let's talk about fast fashion, which I'm going to oh. call myself out right now. This is fast fashion. And I wore it because someone brought that to my attention. This is a top from Zara, and I will no longer be purchasing clothes from Zara as of, I haven't bought this in a year or really any clothes, because I, I wear clothes from like 10 years ago. I'm, I'm like crazy. I, I just recycle, recycle my clothes. I'm not a massive shopper when it comes to um, new clothes, but fast fashion. Do you know enough to talk about it? Yeah. Um, uh... And then we'll talk about makeup. If you're purchasing a shirt for $5, there's just no way that that shirt was made with um, paying the workers a living wage and with uh, sustainable products. And this is one of the, this is one of the luxury things I was talking about. Uh, it's really, really hard to uh, say to people who don't have this kind of money to just oh only buy only buy from sustainable brands. Sustainable brands are inherently more expensive because they have to be because they're paying their workers in a, a living wage and they're they're investing in green technology um, like Patagonia for example. Patagonia is an incredible company. You a lot of their stuff is made out of recycled plastic bottles. Uh, if you buy something from them. 14 years down the line, you can say, you can bring it back to them and say, I'm done with it. And they will give you $150 back for that, for that product. I did that with a coat recently. They will mend your stuff for free. Um, their tags recently have, we vote the bastards out on it. It's an incredible company, but it's also extremely expensive. I think in the culture that we live in, which is there are 52, uh, there are 52 fashion seasons in the year. There are new things coming out every single week. And you have places like H&M cutting up their clothes that they don't sell and putting them on the street because they don't want anybody to take those clothes. You have an extremely 
fucked up cycle going on. Yeah, it's all um, volatile, but it takes a long time and we don't have the time. So Colby, what do we do? What do you mean we don't have the, oh, we, we don't, don't have, have the time with the environment. I mean, all you, that trickles down, right? From right. the environment. So you've got where we live, then you've got politics, then you've got indigenous people taking away stuff from them, right? Uh, yeah. And then you've got what we're talking about, fast fashion and not being able to afford stuff. I mean, it, that's the problem is it doesn't happen overnight. It's it system doesn't. change takes time. But when it comes to the earth, this shirt doesn't matter no. right now. No, but like there, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's really, really hard. Uh, there, if, if you want to do personally as much as you can, um, you can only shop at Goodwill. You can only, I mean, this is a vintage, uh, 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 sweater that I just got, like, but it's, it, that's a recycled, um, system and a circuit creates in a circular economy. And if you clearly our president and these big corporations, these big companies only care about money and power. And if you as a person want to do what you can, you can, first of all, call your reps, you can vote for people that support a Green New Deal, and you can do as much as you can to not buy into this economy that is based purely in consumerism and materialism. Like, like the, like, if you want to buy a new, uh, a new athletic outfit, go to Goodwill and find athletic wear there there's tons of stuff there well and you can wash it with magnets my parents actually bought these magnets that last for a few months instead of using detergent and yeah. you can put the magnets in i don't know the science of it i need to look into it but they don't use detergent dude they yeah. literally put magnets which of course it takes energy we're not all going to be getting a washboard and cleaning our clothes anytime soon oh, but yeah. for people who have washer dryers you can yeah. get magnets. It's those little things. So for me, it's the magnets, putting those in the, in the, in the washer. So it actually cleans the clothes and there's no smell. Magnets are amazing. I yeah. freaking love science. I didn't know about that. That's really cool. It's really cool. And I'll send you a photo later for sure. And then Kangen water, because you hook it up to your tap. You're not taking water from anybody. It's alkalized. You can use it for a ton of stuff. And then as far as you know, the beeswax covering up your Tupperware. Yeah. But when you buy Tupperware, don't buy plastic, buy Pyrex, buy glass. Yeah, buy glass. Yeah. I mean, there's also, there's also, there's some great companies out there. There's a, a company called Clean Cult um, mm -hmm. that will send you glass, um, uh, squeezy things around your house. And they'll, as refills for soap, they'll send you paper boxed refills of soap and you just fill them up uh, in your house. There's also Bestowed Essentials, which has a, um, a, a powdered laundry detergent that comes in a paper bag. Um, there's also, they also have blocks of dish soap. So you take a brush and you rub it against a block of dish soap and it's not liquid. You're not using any plastic. There's so many, so many products out there. Um, in terms of what you said, I want to answer a question that you said earlier, which was uh, how do we get people to not feel bad and just do it? And I found the best way is by leading by example. Nobody as soon as you tell somebody this is what you have to do, people are going to throw up a wall and say, you know what, I'm not into this. And uh, I'm... Well, that's why we failed with the masks, you know, with a lot of people in America, because we didn't have a leader saying that this is what we needed to do. And I don't want to take anyone's right away. No, you know? but, and, and you know, then, then it became a politicized thing. This is not a politicized thing. This is just... This is just, listen, I'm going to leave my, li leave my life this way. And if you want to join me, you're welcome to join me. And people exactly. actually really do get inspired by that. Um, I just became vegan in January. Now, talking about food, talking about um, changing your diet, is re people really don't like it. People have a huge resistance to it because it's cultural, because it's yeah. our history it's our what our mothers fed us when we're ch when we were children i mean it's a it's a really big um decision to make however i will yeah. say you don't have to become a vegan if you make two out of your three meals every day a vegan meal that does a huge amount for the environment if I you make one, you're like all right i'm gonna have chicken in this meal this is what i need this is what i need for my nutrition or this i just want chicken that's fine just if you are aware of what 
animal agriculture does to our environment and you eat with that knowledge, that's okay. You know, you just have to, you have to do what your best is. I do my best all the time. Uh, I follow a 1090 rule. It's like 90% of the time I am trying to be waste free. I am trying to eat a vegan uh, diet. I am, I am trying to not purchase things that are gonna fuck the environment. But, but it's hard. You gotta do some stuff, you know? But it's hard. You're saying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And that's the issue with people is this democracy and economy has made it hard. Yes. And so I, that's where the change comes. It's yes, it, they've made it, they've made it hard because um, money's power. I see somebody keep bringing up makeup. Yeah, um, so let's talk about that for a minute. If you have any information. Um, first of all, I, I, I don't wear a lot of makeup. Um, I'm wearing makeup today because I'm doing this and I have uh, an interview for Free the Walking Dead uh, right after this. Um, there are waste-free makeup companies. Uh, I mean, there's not really one product that you can say, but what about this or what about that? There's, there are so many companies out there that have um, um, paper products for makeup and that don't test on animals. There's a really good app called Good On You. I know it. It's a great app. Anytime you want to buy something, anytime you want to you want to check out a company, they will tell you uh, their labor practices, uh, whether or not they test on animals, uh, whether or not they use animals in their products. Um, yeah, I mean, petroleum. Somebody brought up petroleum. It's that's a it's a hard thing to contend with. There's no way that we can completely erase the use of oil in our in our culture. Um, prosthetics are um, made out of oil. They're made out of plastic. Um, I am building an airstream right now. I'm using plastic pecs as my plumbing. I mean, there are things that you you just can't completely yeah. oil, but if we all had electric cars and we didn't burn fossil fuels with our cars, the amount of oil that we would need in our culture in order to continue you, uh, uh, building those products would be so much less and we wouldn't be emitting that much carbon. Have you heard of the documentary it came out in the 90s? I watched it at a, the Atlanta Film Festival like, God, forever ago. It's called Who Killed the Electric Car? And, it, and it's with the chick from Baywatch, like the one really? with short hair that wasn't the busty one. <laughs> and she was like real like she got so much flack on the show because she wasn't Pamela Anderson she was like a normal looking beautiful woman but she got so much flack and she actually made this documentary called who killed the electric car and it literally talks about um how the electric car was going to be something really really huge and then I think it was GM or somebody like backed out because I'm sure they got a ton of pressure do you know what I mean like well there's I mean it, uh paper also paper from trees used to not be a thing it used to be hemp um but because Hirsch the guy who was doing all this newspaper stuff and had his money in the tree <laughs> economy was like yeah, that's the, he made it sound like hemp was a really bad product, which is actually what criminalized, I might, I need to fact check this, but I'm pretty sure it's what started um, criminalizing marijuana. Because it was just like hemp is a bad, is a bad um, uh, product. But electric cars were just as good, if not better than the, this is actually something else I want to talk about, um, better than the, uh, the gas guzzling cars, but there's also this sentiment that um, that a car is connected to masculinity. And uh, there's a huge, there's a lot of studies lately that show that men are really resistant to doing anything um, that's to, to really giving into an environmental uh, aware life because it feels very feminine because a yeah. lot of natural things are associated with women. Um, and uh, it feels very feminine to jump into that kind of uh, lifestyle. And we really have to uh, ask questions to our, the men in our lives who feel that um, their masculinity is challenged with something like being an environmentalist. You know? And actually anybody watching that has boys that are children, I'd love to know 
what your take is, 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 is about empathy and teaching your son's empathy and that it's okay to cry and it's okay to chat mm -hmm. about, you know, when you don't feel well and why something bothers you. And, you know, I mean, I still see it honestly, personally in my family with certain men in my family, not being able to express how they feel they're baby boomer boomers. They're an older generation, you know, they barely even want to go to the doctor for fear of just being vulnerable, I think. Mm -hmm. And that has so much to do with the way our society has um, put men as the, the, uh, you know, tough mutter kind of guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so emotional intelligence, someone said, yeah, I mean, we need to teach our children emotional intelligence. Because even me as a, as a teenager, you know, I had a lot of issues with anxiety and depression. I didn't know what it was. And people just were like saying you're crazy. You know what I mean? And, and I dealt with a lot of stuff at a really young age. I almost died of meningitis when I was 15. Yeah. Oh boy, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I basically had to like learn how to walk again. And I have major PTSD from that since, especially since COVID, because it's also an airborne virus like meningitis and it's very deadly, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been an advocate from day one about not only masks, but the autoimmunity of the people around me, including my family members, because I came from Por New York to Puerto Rico to Georgia to just chill out for a while, you know, and I've ended up going back and forth between New York and here, um, where I am now. And um, yeah, it's scary. But if we do the right thing, and, and including things within the environment with our, when our within our own health will make the change. It's like, how much is your health worth? Yeah. And how much is the planet worth to you? Not just for you? Because it's not look, the world's not going to explode unless there's a nuclear thing or a meteor hits us. But the planet is going to, t you know, within the next few years, but if it's gonna, it's gonna totally deteriorate over time. And when we're gone, our children, you know, we're just teeing it up for them. And it's just like, come on, guys, like, get out of your, your moment. And hopefully COVID has helped people open up to that realization that it's not about you. Well, it what's interesting about COVID is that, is that it's clear that we have the resources, the ability yes. and all to make changes extremely quickly, uh, to make massive changes very quickly. And, you know, uh, one positive thing, I mean, there are not many positive things about uh, mass death uh, like COVID, um, but one positive thing is that there aren't, weren't nearly as many planes that were being flown, but then um, supposedly the car registrations in New York were up 300%. So, you know, yeah. We, and also we, we are dealing with an existential threat. Um, it, climate change is an existential threat. It's not just like some threat to our, to, it is, it is, it is risking human, the human race, uh, at a, a pretty intense level. Aside from virtual training, how could climate change activism look at our current COVID world? Well, I mean, I think we're talking about it right now, like just using your dollar as your as your voice, changing your own personal, um, uh, changing your personal lifestyle, and um, and also uh, making sure to vote in people that um, believe in a Green New Deal and believe in climate change in the first place. Uh, Donald Trump just the other day was um, there were he was surrounded by a bunch of climate scientists and they were saying that the fires in California are going to get worse and worse and worse and he said it's going to start cooling down just watch I mean I yeah that. Nothing, but like that's just not what's happening here um, yeah, and I just I don't think the American public and the world needs to be gaslit anymore and I'm not going to get too much into politics um I'm obviously not a Trump supporter um, and I'm very passionate about that. And I also, you know, another thing you guys that I want to address is, and just hear me out with this. So every other day we say his name every other day. So equate that with talking about the devil all day. 
right? If you believe in heaven and hell, right? Would you sit around and talk negatively all day long about the devil and how horrible he is and think that that is gonna change anything? No, it's gonna make you more negative. What we need is your light. We need your light. We need the information. We need to come together. I mean, look, we're gonna talk about it. It's gonna happen. But I feel like the more that we talk about the positive changes necessary and drown him out and don't give him the attention on social media, he's gonna cry like a little bitch in the corner because that's what he wants so yeah. let's make our changes not only internally but with our family and friends so we can change what's happening right i mean the important thing to remember as well um about a lot of what's going on with the politics around climate change is that it's very much related to money wow. um, if you look at um where he has a bunch of um, property, it's in a flood zone. Um, you know, uh, there's a huge amount of capital in New York City that is uh, at risk of um, sea level rise and New York City is sinking, Miami is sinking. There's a huge amount of capital in these places um, and uh, investors and uh, the billionaires of this world don't really want to deal with moving to they don't deal with uh the risk if they accept that climate change is real they have to face the monetary effects of that and uh no wonder why people don't want to admit it and so someone just said here yeah. well, i i'm a brazilian and the amazon needs help i love brazil by the way uh, my second mother who raised me is from salvador um our own president doesn't care for preservation I yeah. mean, let's talk about that for a second and then we'll just do a quick review of the things people can do going forward after the conversation today. But yeah, the Amazon's in danger, everything's in danger. And some people say, oh, well that's, that's just natural. Like fires happen every year, it's not climate change, but it's a combination of both what naturally happens and what's happening at an exponential rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about some foreign countries for a minute if you know anything yeah. about Brazil. Brazil, I mean, Bolsonaro is a huge threat, not only to the Amazon, but to um, their country as a whole. There's also a huge drought going on in Brazil. Um, the Amazon rainforest, as, I, as far as I know, has been under threat of um, deforestation for quite a long time. And uh, it's just ramping up like crazy. Um, ever since Bolsonaro pretty much gave um, these people the green light to kind of just start to destroy, um, you know, continue to destroy the Amazon rainforest. And indigenous, there's huge amounts of indigenous people that live in that forest and uh, they their lives are at, at risk. Also, um, the Amazon forest is, a, is like the lungs of our world. Trees suck carbon out of the air. They A forest is like, the main way that we can um, fight against uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, for, for people to be burning the Amazon and to be using it as uh, just, uh, just for its resources is really problematic. Um, I mean, as far as what we can do, I'm not entirely sure about what we can do specifically in Brazil. Getting Bolsonaro out, and I know there's a huge amount of people that hate Bolsonaro, uh, getting Bolsonaro out is, is, is a big one, but also Bolsonaro is big friends with Trump and uh, voting against Trump in our uh, upcoming election might give um, some message to the world that we're not. No, totally. So let's Let's switch to voting just for a second, because obviously you are super passionate about it. You were a massive um, advocate for Bernie. You were calling people on the phone. You were a huge influence to me um, with your activism, um, your political activism as well. So let's talk to the people right now who don't vote at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, I feel like right now it's one of those things that's like, like a super popular movie or a really popular 
CD that CD. I sound like I'm from the '90s. We um, know I am. <laughs> record that like that like people like you have to listen to this and they're like no I don't want it I mean voting is one of those things that we oftentimes at the electoral college we feel robbed we feel like our vote doesn't matter but in some of these states our votes at the electoral college can swing by a couple thousand or a couple hundred thousand votes so so our votes really do matter uh, especially this election. This election, um, I mean, we all know, like it's 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 up. It's really uh, our democracy is at risk, and number one, our climate is at risk. Uh, Trump has rolled in his four years of being a president. He has rolled back 66 environmental protection agency regulations, um, and he has 34 more waiting in the wings. So that's a total of 100 environmental protections that he has rolled back. That's including gas emissions during a respiratory pandemic. He has also started um, uh, drilling in Alaska. So, you know, we... He, and the people who are on the front lines of this are people of color, you know, in poor communities. So we, we really have no, uh, we really do, do, cannot last another four years in the environment with this guy. So uh, it's like, you know, I'm looking at all this and you see Jeff Bezos income and Apple and all these other people that have profited in the billions during COVID. And I do buy Apple products and I do buy things on Amazon. And there is a sense of guilt every time I'm in my checkout cart. But at the same time, it's like you're afraid to walk into a store and buy something because of COVID. So we're at a very big crossroads right now about how we consume and what we consume. But more importantly, I want everyone to thrive. I want everyone to make money in this country. I want everyone to have the opportunities that I've had as, as a privileged white and also half Hispanic person. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and as a female, my God, our women have made such massive breakthroughs in the last five years specifically. And I'm so proud to be a woman, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm so proud to know people like you who are doing exponential things, beautiful things. Um, I got you, Lauren. You know? Yeah. So, so money's great, but how much do we need of it? How much does one person need of it? And there's so many amazing people that donate, but, you know, and I'm getting a little teary because, you know, for many years, I was a gypsy and didn't even have my own place. And, you know, I was all over the place. So I didn't really focus on anything. And then I started acting and really felt like I could touch the lives of people. And then through the pandemic, I realized that with water and the other things, this show that I can do even more. So I feel like my fire has been lit. And, and I am here because I've got that energy to give, but for everybody else that is feeling stuck, that is feeling like their vote doesn't matter, that is feeling like their place and class in life is never gonna grow, what do you have to say to them? Um, I mean, that's a, it's a, that's a, it's like a larger cultural thing. We live in a world where, uh, we really feel like uh, oftentimes that we don't individually matter. And it's because, you know, we live in a really, really big country. It's a huge country. And oftentimes we feel like, oh, my one thing that I'm doing doesn't actually do anything. But I, I do think that that is a form of um, disillusionment. And like, like if, if, if we, feel like there's nothing we personally can do, then we're succumbing to a form of um, crip like uh, crippling, um, what's that word? It's a terrible word uh, things right now, but like- It's fine. <laughs> we're not, we're not um, uh, allowing ourselves to really take power into our own hands. Just from, just from, my, me living my life the way that I live it and posting about it occasionally, I got like, I have friends that have come to me and been like, let's talk about this. What can I do? I have, I got a, a, a really nice fan letter from somebody in Europe who was like, I have started doing all this stuff simply because of what you do. We really have no idea what, 
effect we can have as people in our families and in our communities. And I, I really think succumbing to just like, well, it's the system and I can't do anything. And what I can do is too minuscule compared to what needs to happen in the system is just an excuse. And uh, it is, uh, it's a, it's a tragic excuse, you know? Yeah. I really feel like there are, there are things that we can do. Um, there's a really great book by Rebecca Solnit called Hope in the Dark that has been uh, a, a really helpful guide to me in the past few years because Hope in the dark. Hope in the dark. Yeah, and Rebecca Solon, it's a really special writer. Um, she talks a lot about she talks a lot about uh, climate change. She talks a lot about um, um, you know Katrina. She did a lot of research on that. And see, the thing is. Sorry to cut you off, but the thing no, is, no. this is what I go back to, is I feel like everybody cares and everybody's innately a good person, but because it's not in their literal backyard, the feeling of being able to do something gets minimized. So well, also, also, sorry to cut you off, but also let's just remember that like, that like, it is in a lot of people's backyard. It is in indigenous people's backyard. It, I mean, with Dakota, with Dakota Pipeline, you know, it's, it's in the native community's backyard. It's in black people's backyard. And a lot of people just don't listen to them. And as soon as white people come up and they're like, it's, it, this is something we have to think about. All of a sudden people are like, oh yeah, 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 you're right. But for every like white person that goes vegan, like three black people go vegan. It's, it's, it's. That's crazy think is painted as this kind of white thing, but it's very much a uh, led by people of color, um, by BIPOC mostly. Totally. Someone actually said really quickly, he, DJ Love Matt said, well, you can't be half Hispanic. Well, yeah, I can. You want to see my 23 and me? My dad is from Madrid and my mom is Irish. I'm like 43% Hispanic. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so let's thank you for this conversation. This is so amazing. I would love to end it I have about two more minutes before Instagram shuts me off. Let's talk about the boys and let's talk about Fear the Walking Dead. Like you're on fire, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone said your acting's really good in both seasons of the boys. Are you going to be in the show throughout all of it? Um, I hope so. I mean, <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. I mean, season three, we're going to start working on soon. Um, and I, uh we'll be in that so that's exciting i think i can say that maybe i can't oh well it's okay oh, well, it's out um <laughs> uh, nobody cares. uh but yeah it's um yeah i i mean i love being on those shows um i love working uh, uh on both of those shows they're really really fun it's exciting too because fear the walking dead went green this past year oh speaking um, of colors what's your favorite color what is my favorite color yeah Oh God. I mean, I like, I mean, I'm really a rainbow person. Like I really like all the colors. Why okay. is that? <laughs> so I love to do like a James Lipton moment. Okay. So if you're, let's just say, okay, of all these colors, what's your favorite? Orange. Okay. Orange. Creativity, enthusiasm, happiness, hope, success, concentration, uh, and caution <laughs> caution yeah that's interesting that's interesting caution that is the co color of caution isn't it it's so, so interesting hello that's I so learning about colors and auras and fun stuff mm -hmm. and then let me ask you a fun question uh -huh. if you were on an island and you were already provided with water and um let's say coconuts what were the three things that you would bring for the rest of your life? And you have fresh water. Fresh water and coconuts. You got fresh water, coconuts, and an island. What are the three things that you would bring? A friend. Aww. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh. I love that. Um, uh, and let's think. Probably um, a knife and... Uh, uh, I'm a sleeping bag. <laughs> I love it, girl. Thank you so much for being on Quarantine But Cute. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. These were incredible facts. <laughs> what? 
It's so good to see your face. It's so good to see your face. Like, can we do a virtual hug? Yeah. <laughs> I want your sweater. It's so good. Yeah, vintage, secondhand. It's Dude. so good. Well, you guys check out Kobe Minifee. You can check her out on your Instagram, on Fear the Walking Dead, and on season two of The Boys on Amazon Prime. Just, you guys, take it step by step, day by day. Change one thing, and you can change your life. I love you guys so much. Yeah, yeah it's true. I'll Thank see you. Soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>